you're welcome to my channel in this video we are going to be talking about the last categorization of taxes which is burden and impact of payment yeah in our previous videos we talked about the first two categories of taxes which is expression of tax rate then tax rates and base structure yeah so in this video we are going to be looking at the last category which is burden and impact of payment and remember the cost unit we are handling is elements of taxation burden and impact of payment is the category we are looking at yeah classification of taxes in this category is based on who holds the ultimate economic burden of the tax like who pays the tax and who is responsible to collect the tax and remit the tax to the tax authorities who pays the tax who collects it and takes it to the tax authorities to the government authorities yeah it's what we are going to look at under burden and impact of payment yeah so we shall first look at a term called shifting of tax this is the process of transfer of a tax from one person to another yeah it's mainly from the manufacturer to the consumer yeah shifting of the tax the process of transfer of tax then we have instance of tax instance of, of tax refers to the settlement of the burden on the ultimate taxpayer that person who really pays the tax is the incidence of tax the settlement of the burden on the ultimate taxpayer and in this category in this category of burden and impact of payment we look at two things which is direct and indirect taxes yeah and the difference between these two forms of taxes arises due to who bears the obligation to pay and the incidence of tax yes these taxes can further be explained yes so we are going to explain them one by one we are going to first explain the direct taxes then after we explain the indirect taxes so let's first look at direct taxes direct taxes refers to a tax where the taxpayer bears the responsibility to remit tax to the government in addition to holding the economic the ultimate economic burden of the tax yeah you you're the one who is paying it and you have to make sure that the tax reaches the authorities yeah so you you have two responsibilities you hold the ultimate economic burden and then remit the tax to the government yeah that's what we call direct taxes it's charged directly it's mainly charged on business income and employment income you give pay as you earn corporation tax capital gains tax rental tax yeah and those are some of the examples of direct taxes let's look at the advantages advantages of direct taxes first is that it's equitable it's equitable in that there is social justice in allocation of the tax burden in case of direct taxes they are based on the principle of ability to pay because most of the times it's it's always charged on business income and employment income they charge you tax according to how you earn yeah according to how how much money you make in your business or according to how much you earn as your salary so it's equitable the social justice in allocation of the tax burden then another advantage is certainty as far as direct taxes are concerned the tax the taxpayer is certain as to how much he is expected to pay as the tax rates are decided in advance so the taxpayer always know how much they are supposed to pay so there is certainty there is equity and then another advantage is relatively elastic direct taxes are relatively elastic they increase with an increase in income or wealth of individuals and companies if they increase your salary they also increase your employment income i mean on employment tax yeah if you if your if your profits increase as a company the tax that you pay also increase so it's relatively elastic yeah 
it, it increases with the increase in the income and wealth of individuals. Yeah, then it creates public consciousness. They have an educative value. In case you pay direct taxes, you are always like keen. You, you, you want to know what they're using your taxes for. So you pay attention to, to public issues. Yeah, so it creates public consciousness. Then another advantage is economical. Direct taxes are generally econo economical to collect. For instance, in case of personal income tax, the tax can be deducted at source from the income or salaries of individuals. Therefore, the government does not have to spend much in tax collection. Yeah, it doesn't have to spend much in tax collection. So it's economical. And lastly, and inflationary. Direct taxes can help to control inflation. Yeah, if, if inflation is high, in the periods of inflation, the government may increase the tax rate in order to reduce on people's disposable income. Yeah. So it can help to control inflation in an economy. And those are the advantages of direct taxes. We have an inflationary economical creates public consciousness, relatively elastic, certainty, and then equitable. Let's look at the disadvantages or demerits of direct taxes. The first disadvantage is tax evasion. There is a good amount of tax evasion. The tax evasion is due to the high rates, documentation and formalities, poor and corrupt tax administration. It's easier for businessmen to evade direct taxes. They can suppress information about their income by manipulating their accounts and avoid the tax on Yeah, so it's easier to avoid paying taxes. Yeah, you, you, you can tell them this is the amount of money that I made this year, but when it's not the one. Yeah, so it's very easy. It's very easy for someone to evade tax. Then inconvenient. Direct taxes are inconvenient in the sense that they involve several procedures and formalities in filing of returns. When people are required to pay a sizable part of their income as tax, they feel very much hurt as their propensity to evade tax remains high. So it's inconvenient. Yeah. Then another disadvantage is narrow coverage. Due to low coverage, the government does not get enough funds for public expenditure. They always charge employment income to government workers. Yeah, government workers. Government workers and people in registered companies, something like that. So it has a narrow coverage. Yeah, some people are not taxed on their employment income. Then it affects capital formation. Direct taxes can affect savings and investment. Due to taxes, the net income of people gets reduced. Yeah, this in return reduces savings. Reduction in savings results into low investment. The low investment affects capital formation in the country. Then it affects the willingness and ability to work. Highly progressive direct taxes reduce people's ability and willingness to work and save. Then sectoral imbalance. Sectoral imbalance is, as far as direct taxes are concerned, certain sectors like the corporate sector are heavily taxed, whereas the agriculture sector is taxed less. So there is imbalance in the sectors because of direct taxes. So those are the disadvantages of direct taxes, sectoral imbalance, effect on willingness and ability to work, affects capital formation, narrow coverage, inconvenient, then lastly, tax evasion. Let's look at indirect taxes. Indirect taxes refers to a tax where the tax is collected by an intermediary from the person who bears the ultimate burden of tax. This always happens when there is transfer of tax. Yeah, the manufacturer transfers uh, the burden 
of paying the tax to the consumer so he has to collect the tax from the consumer and remit it to the government authorities yeah, so there is always an intermediary and it's most of the times it's a manufacturer that is in between there yeah so indirect taxes you always pay taxes without knowing you don't know that you're paying it so an example of indirect taxes we have value added tax which is VAT. then excise duty import duty and uh, export duty Let's look at the advantages of indirect taxes. First is that it's convenient. Indirect taxes are imposed on production, sale, and movements of goods and services. Yeah, these are imposed on manufacturers, sellers, and traders, but their burden may be shifted to consumers of goods and services, who are the final taxpayers. Such taxes, in the form of higher prices, are paid only on purchase of a commodity, or enjoyment of services so taxpayers do not feel the burden of these taxes yeah taxpayers do not feel the burden of the taxes because you can't be knowing that you're paying a tax whenever you go to buy something from the shop you are paying a tax but you don't feel the burden because you don't know so it's convenient then difficult to evade it's difficult to evade you really want to drink renzori yeah, you are thirsty. You you will have to buy the renzori, and when you buy the renzori, you're paying the tax. So it's difficult to evade since they are inbuilt. Yeah. Then another thing is weight coverage. Unlike direct taxes, the indirect taxes have a weight coverage. Majority of the products or services are subject to indirect taxes, and we are ever using those products and services, the food the salt, the sugar, the cooking oil. Yeah, so it, it has a wide coverage. Then elastic. Some of the indirect taxes are elastic in nature. When government feels it's necessary to increase its revenue, it increases these taxes. Yeah, so it's elastic in nature. Then universality. Indirect taxes are paid by all classes of people. So they are broad based. Poor people may be out of the net of the income tax, but they pay indirect taxes when you're buying goods. Yeah, so universality. It's paid almost by everyone, by all classes of people. Another advantage is that it may not affect motivation to work and save. Since you are not aware that you are paying the tax, you're not feeling the burden, it will not affect your motivation to work and save. Then flexibility and buoyancy. The indirect taxes are more flexible and buoyant. Flexibility is the ability of the tax system to generate proportionality, higher tax revenue, with a change in the tax base. And buoyancy is a wider concept as it involves the ability of the tax system to generate higher tax revenue with a charge in the tax base, as well as tax rates. So in the Indirect taxes are flexible and buoyant. Yeah. Then we look at the disadvantages. Disadvantages first is high cost of collection. Indirect tax fails to satisfy the principle of of economy. The government has to set up elaborate machinery to administer indirect taxes. Therefore, the cost of tax collection per unit of revenue is raised. Yeah, so high cost of collection, then increase in income inequalities. Generally, indirect taxes are regressive in nature. The rich and poor people have to pay the same rate of indirect taxes on certain commodities of mass consumption. Yeah, whether you're rich or poor, you buy sugar 3,000. Yeah, so it increases income inequalities. Then it affects consumption. Indirect taxes affect consumption of certain products for instance a higher rate of duty on certain products such as con consumer durables may restrict the use of such products if they overcharge if they over if they over charge tax on a certain product its price will increase and when the prices increase it will discourage people from buying it so it 
affects consumption sometimes. Then lack of social consciousness. Since you are not aware of the taxes that you're paying, you will not be so keen. What are they using, the money that I pay, the taxes that they always charge? So there is lack of social consciousness. Then uncertainty. Uncertainty as indirect taxes are always unknown. Another disadvantage is inflationary. The indirect taxes are inflationary in nature. The tax charged on goods and services increases the prices. Therefore, to reduce inflationary pressure, the government may reduce the tax rates, especially on essential items. So once you increase the tax on some products, the prices will increase, and prices is one of the factors that lead to inflation. So indirect taxes are inflationary in nature. Then possibility of tax evasion. There is a possibility of tax evasion of indirect taxes, as some customers may not pay indirect taxes with the support of the sellers. Like, you you can decide to stop consuming that product as a way of, of avoiding to pay the tax. So there is a possibility of tax evasion. Yeah, and those are the disadvantages of indirect taxes. First is high cost of collection. It affects consumption, lack of social consciousness, uncertainty, inflationary, then possibility of tax evasion. So that was all about the last categorization of tax, which is the burden and impact of payment. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and watch my next video. We shall be talking about the differences between direct and indirect taxes. Yeah, and it will be the last thing that we look at in this topic then after we shall go to topic two